Today, we're going to talk about how to install tree, grass, and environmental mods in Skyrim. In fact, when it comes to modding Skyrim, choosing tree and grass mods, along with ENB combinations, can account for about 70% of the modding process. This part is crucial, as it lays the foundation for modding Skyrim. However, adding trees and grass without consideration can lead to significant FPS drops, making the game unplayable or experiencing mod conflicts resulting in CTDs, making gameplay impossible. Therefore, selecting the right tree, grass, and environmental mods is a top priority for every player. Therefore, I'm going to show you how to build your Skyrim environment using the least number of plugins and in the easiest way possible. So, stay tuned until the end of the video. Let's get started without further delay. At first, let me introduce a few mods that can further enhance your Skyrim environment. Firstly, the No Dead Twig Branches, Tweak for Happy Little Trees mod. Although it was originally designed for happy little trees, I found that it works properly even without that mod. This mod removes the messy sprawling branches from reach trees, dead spruces, and tundra trees. If you've ever found Skyrim's dead trees with tangled branches unsightly, this mod can help improve their appearance. Next up is Ugly Flora Be Gone, Base Object Swapper. This mod is a simple one that removes all unsightly and nodding plants in Skyrim using the Base Object Swapper. It cleans up the Skyrim environment by getting rid of plants that often stick out unnaturally or look quite messy. Additionally, since it removes some plants, it can slightly improve frame rates. Next up is Shrubbery Symphony, Enhanced Greenery. It replaces the shrubs and plant models around Skyrim. You can either replace the plants using the Vanilla Path or use BOS to provide more diversity by randomizing scale and type. If you want to give Skyrim a greener texture and make it look more like summer, I believe this mod will be quite helpful for you. Next up is the High Quality Ivy Replacer, Base Object Swapper. This mod replaces the existing ivy with higher quality vine meshes and textures, and it blends well with the color schemes of the previously introduced mods. Like the other mods, this one is also based on the Base Object Swapper framework and is compatible with Seasons of Skyrim, allowing you to enjoy even more beautiful ivy in Skyrim. Next up is TMD The Rift Leaves. This mod adds fallen leaves outside the water in the rift region, creating a more natural water effect. When you install this mod and walk along the water's edge in Riften, you'll be able to enjoy leaves floating on the water enhancing your immersion in Skyrim's natural environment. Next, let me talk about trees. And in my case, I chose Blub ODE's Tree Replacer 2022 version. Let me explain the reasons for my choice. Firstly, the 2022 version lacks a somewhat fantastical feel. What this means is that Blubbo's latest Tree Replacer often gives off a vibe of being in a fantasy realm, which, while suitable for Skyrim being an otherworldly place, may not always match the realism we're looking for. So, in this video, I opted for a more realistic tree choice, and the 2022 version felt more grounded compared to its latest iteration. Secondly, the Blub ODE Tree Replacer 2022 version doesn't come with an ESP. This means that although Blub ODE's latest tree replacer doesn't add a lot of trees to the field, but another tree mods often involve placing numerous trees, which can lead to conflicts with other architectural mods like buildings or terrain overhauls. These conflicts can sometimes result in crashes. Personally, I believe that using a replacer like the ESP Less Blubbo 2022 version can reduce the chances of conflicts with other tree or building mods. Lastly, Blubbo DE's Tree Replacer 2022 version supports 3D LOD, ensuring a smoother transition between LODs and actual objects. In Skyrim, distant trees and mountains are kept as low-quality textures known as LODs. When players approach them, they transition into actual trees or terrain. This transition should be seamless for a natural feel. Blubbo's 2022 version seems to handle this transition well, which is crucial for maintaining immersion in the game world. 
In my case, I chose Blubbo Aspen Replacer 2022 version 1.2, along with Blubbo Snowpine's Replacer 2022 version 1.1 with the mesh patch. Additionally, I selected Blubbo Pine's 2022 Replacer version 0.9 and Blubbo Reach Tree Replacer version 0.9. For the Morthal Swamp, I opted for the detailed landscapes, mushroom trees in Morthal Swamp Brown version. Since none of these come with an ESP, they serve as a base for further tree mods with ESPs. Lastly, please download all three main files of the 3D LOD add-on for various Blubbo DE trees. Up until now, I've been explaining the tree guidelines with the aim of minimizing ESP and enhancing LOD. Therefore, if you feel that there's a shortage of trees, feel free to add other trees alongside this guide. Given the low ESP count, I believe it will also be compatible with other tree mods. Next, let's discuss grass. In the grass section, I drew significant inspiration from Nolvis Ascension. While there haven't been major changes in Nolvis's mod configuration, I'll explain the direction for future patches related to grass cache. For the grass setup, install mixed grass and tamrielic grass, and additionally, add folk vanger grass and folk vanger summer tundra in that order. Continuing, install Origins of Forest 3D Forest Grass, and then add Cathedral 3D Pine Grass, full 3D coverage. If you've completed these steps, proceed to install Less Ugly Tundra Grass and Nolvis Ascension Seasonal Grass Mashup. Finally, apply the ENB Complex Grass Patch for Tamrielic Grass, Folkvanger Summer Tundra, Origins of Forest, and Cathedral 3D Pine Grass. In the following section, we will add the grass cache feature to the previously introduced grass mod configuration. But before that, let's delve into an explanation of grass cache. In simple terms, it allows grass to be visible even from very far distances. By doing this, you won't suddenly experience grass popping up as you move around, making it an essential patch. To apply this patch, you first need to install grass control from the No Grass and Objects mod. Since it requires the NetScript framework, Make sure to install that if you haven't already. Additionally, you'll need Grass Cache Helper NG. Grass Cache Helper NG modifies the way Grass Cache is loaded by allowing CGID file loading instead of GID files, enabling the use of CGID files generated by No Grass and Objects without the need to rename them. It also supports Seasons of Skyrim automatically loading seasonal CGID files based on the current season. Please make sure to install this as well. For installing Grass Control, use Mod Organizer as you would for any other mod. Once you've installed Grass Control, you'll also need to add the Grass Generation MO2 plugin below it. This plugin file should be placed directly in Mod Organizer's plugins folder. After completing this step, open the grasscontrol.config.txt file inside the grass control folder and modify the specified items as shown in the video. If you've entered all the values in grasscontrol.config, save and exit. After that, at the top of Mod Organizer, click the spanner icon to clean and then press Precache Grass. When you press Precache Grass, Skyrim will automatically run. And at this point, if you have the console key open, you can see the progress of precache grass. If an error occurs during the process and the game exits, don't worry. In this case, Mod Organizer will automatically restart Skyrim and continue with precache grass. When performing the precache grass task, it may take quite a while, depending on your mod configuration. In some cases, it could take up to an hour. Once the process is complete, you'll receive a message similar to the video. And afterward, you can find the grass folder within the overwrite folder of your mod organizer. At this point, create an empty mod by right-clicking in the mod organizer. Place the grass folder inside the empty mod folder and rename that mod to Grass Cache. Finally, activate this mod. And when you run Skyrim, if you see grass even in distant areas, the Grass Cache patch has been successful. Once you've successfully completed the Grass Cache patch, it's time to generate 3D LOD. 
To do this, you'll need to use TextGen and Dindalod. If you're unfamiliar with the basic concepts and usage of TextGen and Dindalod, I recommend watching the video introduced in this video first before watching this one. Now, assuming that the remaining viewers are familiar with the basic concepts and usage of TextGen and Dindalod, let's proceed with the explanation. First, run TextGen and configure it as shown in the video, then generate the output files. Make sure to check the HD Grass option during this process. Next is Dindalod. Dindalod settings are nearly identical to the guide video we discussed earlier. But this time, let's set the max tilt size value to 2048, which is larger. Since this guide arranges fewer trees in the field, I believe we can upgrade the LOD quality a bit. Also, please check the Ultra option and generate the output file as shown in the video. If you complete this process, your Skyrim can use more beautiful trees, grass, and 3D LOD with applied grass cache, just like in the video. In fact, regarding Blubbo's older version of tree replacers, many players may have doubts because it's not widely used. However, personally, I think this mod has many hidden advantages. Therefore, I chose mods like this and created a video to help you understand all these aspects as concisely as possible. Hopefully, this video will be helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications for more channel growth. And if you'd like to support through Patreon, it would greatly assist in video production. Also, try using the presets I've created. That concludes the video. Have a great time in Skyrim, and see you in the next video.